Good morning, FL Kids. What's up? It's Sunday, y'all. Are you ready? It's going to be a good one. I'm excited. I Hopefully, you're excited. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, it's beautiful outside today. I don't know if you guys noticed. Maybe you just woke up. Maybe you're still eating your breakfast, still eating your cereal. Maybe you're, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing this morning. Oh, what a burp. Get rid of that. Hey, good morning, Miss McKenna. I see Miss Ashley's watching. Ooh, the Weidman family's watching. Good morning, Miss Layla. And uh, who else we got over there? We got Elijah. We got Mr. Judah. Judah! I saw a very cute picture of you, Judah, with a little bow tie on yesterday. I think it was very cute. Very cute. Miss you guys. Miss your faces. Um, so I don't know if you guys heard the news, but uh, we maybe had over 20 kids learn their memory verses this week, which means that later today, me and Miss Gabby are getting slimed. Ah! I was secretly rooting for you while at the same time rooting against you. So good job, guys. Good job. Um, you guys did a really great job. There were really great videos. I mean, you knew it. Like, you had it down. It wasn't like... I mean, some of the preschoolers, they're getting a little assistance, but that's okay. It's okay to, when you're younger, need a little, need a little bit of extra something. Um, so yeah, it was pretty exciting, pretty exciting. We are starting out a new series this month, uh, talking about focus. I'm just going to pre-warn you in advance. Don't be alarmed if the post-it notes start falling off my wall. They've been falling off all morning and I just predict they will continue doing that. So there you go. It's going to be a good time. A good time. Whoop whoop. Oh, 1 p.m. Is that that's the time? Yep, that's when it's gonna happen. I'm I'm excited. Um, I heard also this week I've seen and uh, and seen some videos and heard actually from a couple of you kids that you got your little um, packages in the mail with a special delivery with some little friends. Maybe you're watching this morning and you have got your mini Miss Val or mini Gabby or mini Miss. Gina or Miss McKenzie or Miss Cynthia or Miss Ashley with you. Hopefully you guys will have some fun with that this next month. Uh, I saw the Palmers yesterday and theirs were already looking like they had gone through war, man. They were like, they were well loved already. And so I'm loving it. It's super fun. Um, I'm excited for the adventures that I'm going to get to go on because I'm sick of being at home. And so if I can have uh, you guys take me and go do some fun stuff, I'm going to be super excited. So make sure you keep posting pictures and videos and enjoy it. I know my kids, when they were little, they loved those paper doll things. They used to play like for hours. I'm just like, I don't get it, it's paper doll. But it was really fun. And then I'm seeing with you kids that it is, uh, it's you guys are enjoying it. So I'm excited, it is gonna be great. Um, we're gonna kick off this morning. I have got a little, uh, oh, good morning, Harrison. What's up, my brother? How is milking cows going, my little farmer dude? Harrison, the, my man, he has been working on a farm, man. He's going to be having a farmer tan this summer. I can't wait to see him back at church. He's going to have that, you know, that line from where your t-shirt's at, from being out in the farm. It's going to be great. Uh, we're going to play a little game this morning to get kicked off. Um, so there are a couple different ways that we look at things, right? Um, when you're looking at something, you know, just with your eyeballs, right? Uh, that's to see kind of basic things. But then we have these two amazing, uh, amazing inventions that came about that they help you see things in a different way. One of them helps you see things that are very, very, very far away. Anybody have any ideas? You could throw it up in the uh, comments. If you know, what is that device that you use to see things really far away? They look at it to look at like stars, and you put your eye up to it, and then it helps you see things that are far away. Anybody have any ideas? Do you know what it is? Do you know? Do you know? Anybody? It is a telescope. You use a telescope. Actually, oh, the deer offs. You came in just like as I was saying it. Uh, so we got this telescope here that helps you see stars and all the amazing things that happen. Uh, and then the second question is, what do you use when you want to see something um, that is very small, but you want to see it closer? So it's something that's taking something very tiny and making it bigger um, so that you can see more detail. Anybody know what that thing's called? You maybe used it in science class. You like look down at it and you twist it. And it's got these little 
these little things that go around and, and maybe you would put like a grain of sand and you would get to see what that sand, maybe, you know? Anybody have any ideas? It is a microscope. A microscope. Oh, binoculars. Binoculars was a good guess. Binoculars was a good guess. Uh, I was talking about a microscope. It lets you see things a lot more detailed. It lets you see the fine little bits that you can't just see with just your eye. Um, and so there's these different tools. We use them for different things. So we're going to play a little game called telescope, microscope, or eyes. Now what you guys are going to do is get ready to um, put in your chat box a T if it's a telescope, an M if you think a microscope should be used, or an E if you think it should just be your eyes. So just the first letter of the word. T for telescope, M for microscope, E for I. Are you ready? I'm gonna move the camera so we can see the screen a little better. Here we go. How is that? All right, here is the first thing. And this is just um, some sheet music. This is just some sheet music. You're gonna play the piano, a guitar, um, some drums. You're gonna look at some music. What are you gonna use? Are you gonna use a telescope, a microscope, or just your eyes to look at that? Oh, I see a telescope from Ms. Hava. I see some, I see some eyes um, coming from, oh, I see lots of E's. Okay, that's right. You're just gonna use your eyes for that. You don't, maybe you might need your glasses if you're blind like me, but you just can use your eyes for that one. Good answers, guys, good answers. All right, here's the next one. That is some strands of hair. What do you think? Do you think you just are going to use your eyes to see that closer? Do you think you would want to look through a microscope to see that closer? Or do you think that you would want to uh, use a telescope to see that closer? I see E's. I see some M's. I see some M's. Yeah, if you want to look really close at a strand of hair, you're going to want to look through a microscope because a microscope is a, uh, or a hair is pretty small. It's a pretty small thing. All right, here comes our next one. That is, they look like eyelashes almost, those guys there, but I think that's someone's hair. Okay, here we go. Here is our next one. The moon and stars. What do we think? Good morning, Moyers. Hi, Furies. I think I maybe already said hi to you, but I don't remember. All right, so the, the, the moon and the stars. What do we want to use to look at that closer? I'm seeing some T's. Yeah, we want a telescope so we can see that thing that lives super far away a little bit closer. Good job, guys. Y'all ate your Wheaties this morning or your, what's good for your brain? I don't know. Your Pop-Tarts, if you are got that extra sugar in you. Okay, this is, hold on, I, I have mine here. This is a close-up of that. So this is my little jar of sand, right? And that is what sand looks very close up. So do you think we used a microscope to see that closer? Or did we use a telescope to see that closer? Grains of sand, what do you think, guys? Oop. What do you think, microscope or telescope? That looks really cool. Look how tiny those are, this looks, looks wacky. All right, so we got, we got again, we got some, some microscopes. Oh, hi, Maverick. You brought me a sock. Thank you so much. Maverick is here, guys. He's he's roaming around. Microscope is right. You're going to want to look at a microscope to, microscope to see that closer. All right, here is our next one. Ooh, what is that? That's the star. That's a very bright star, right? A very bright star. Oh, Maverick's coming to say hi. Say hi, Maverick. Hi, Maverick. What do we want to see to look at the stars? A telescope. I don't think you want to look at a, uh, a star under a microscope. It would burn you. And you would need a really big microscope. Oh, yes. Hi. Yes. Oh, just giving me kisses. Hello. Hello. Yes, a telescope is going to help you see it closer. All right, Maverick's going to help me. We're going to push the button. Ow, don't bite me. All right, so this is a computer. What do you need to look at a computer? What are we going to use? What are we going to... Oh, Maverick. No. No, okay, I'm going to put you down. I'm going to put you down, you little lunatic. What are we going to do to look at a computer? Do we need a microscope for that? Do we need a telescope to look at a computer? Or do we just need our eyes? 
our eyes to look at a, at a computer, right? And again, you might need glasses for a little assistance. Okay, you're going down. You're a little wild man. Maverick's a little wild today. Yes, our eyes to look at the computer. Good job, guys. You guys are smart this morning. You're doing great. I mean, you're always smart. What am I talking about? All right, what about this one? What is that? That looks really scary. I'm just throwing that out there. I don't like that. That's scary. That is a giant ant. But it's not actually a giant ant. What are we look at it, looking at it through to make it look so big? A microsoup is right. Good job. You guys are doing great this morning. Good participation. A microscope. And then look how much detail. You can see that tiny little ant. I almost just called it a mouse. Oh my goodness. A microscope lets you see all the detail of that tiny little ant that may crawl on your lunch when you're outside having a picnic. All right. Reading a book. What do you think you need if you are reading a book? Do you need a telescope for that, a microscope for that, or just your eyes? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Oh, I'm seeing some E's. I'm seeing some E's. Just your eyes. Just your eyes. Nothing major there. Just your eyes. All right. I think there's one more. Oh, yep. I, um, Saturn. Is this Saturn? This is one of the planets. Saturn have the rings? It's been a while, guys. I kind of forget. I should have looked. Um, Jupiter. Which one has the rings? I'm phoning a friend. Mr. Casey, which of the planets has the rings? Venus and uh, Saturn. Saturn. I think this is supposed to be Saturn. What do you guys think? My science people. I think this one is Saturn. When you're looking at a planet and to be able to see it that close, you're going to need the telescope. I mean, you can, in theory, see some of these planets with your eye at night. They're very, very just like bright little stars. But to see it that close, you would definitely need a telescope for sure. Saturn. All right. All right. So we're back to this. Faith. We are talking about faith. We are talking about trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. Um, now, in our story of our Bible, the things that we learn about, we know um, that faith is something that you can't, uh, you can't, it's not with your hands, it's not something you can touch, you can see. Um, God is not something that you, not someone that you can see. We, I've never seen God. Uh, I've never seen Jesus. Uh, I, I know that he's real because I feel him. I, he lives in my heart. Good morning, Wood family. I saw the Simonetti's just hopping on. Um, so faith is when you are trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. Now, what are some of the things that we see that uh, we can say, man, I know that there is a God because I see whatever that fill in the blank is, right? I see um, maybe a beautiful flower, right? And you're like, man, there's no way that that just happened by accident. Um, I see this really awesome uh, starfish, right? There's no, I mean, the detail and the, the things that you that you can see on the inside, like that, that had to be designed. That's not just something that just magically happens, right? Um, oh, look at this. This is, this is uh, we found this when we were on the beach on our cruise. That is a sand dollar. Like, look how pretty and detailed that is, right? You know that there is a God who created because you can see his creation. Now, the same way that we know that we can trust faith, it has to come by what um, we can see happened in the past. So we're going to be taking a little cruise through our Bible. Hopefully you brought your Bible. Who brought their Bible today? Give me a hand up if you brought your Bible. Um, and I have a few facts, a little couple statements that people say about faith. Um, here is one. People say, keep the faith, man. Right? People say that. That's something that you hear all the time. When they're going through a hard time, they're like, wow. Keep the faith, man. Keep the faith. I don't know where you're going to keep it. Back pocket. I keep mine in my heart. I keep my faith in there. I have a little pocket in there just for my faith. Tuck it away, right? Keep the faith. Here's another one. Uh, maybe you guys can fill in the blank on this. Faith can move. What do you think faith can move? What do you think? Faith can move. 
What do you think? Faith can move. Do you guys know? What's, what's, the, what's the hand pushing? It's moving the mountains, right? Faith can move mountains. And I don't know that it means like actual mountains, to be honest. I think it may be more, you know, figurative mountains. Maybe that really difficult thing that you're like, oh, no, I'm going to do this. That kind of mountain. But hey, it can move a real mountain too. And then we have one more here. Take a what of faith. Take a, what's that lady doing? What's she doing? She is taking a, any ideas? I mean, she's doing like a split midair. That's impressive. Take a leap. Good job. I don't know if that's Trent or, or Wes, but good job, guys. Maybe it's both of you. Maybe it's Anna yelling from the background. I don't know. I don't know what's happening over there at the Deerolf house. Good. Oh, Palmer family got it. The Weidmans got it. Ooh, the Turks got it. Good job, Dalton. Good job, Addison. Take a leap of faith. And so that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. So again, I was saying, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and bust them open. Bust them out. Bust a move. I got my Bible. Yes, I do. Here she is. He is. It is. I don't know that Bibles have gender. Um, and we're going to be in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Hebrews and we're going to be in chapter 11. So go ahead. You're going to go leap into Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews is in the New Testament. New Testament. So you're going to go towards the back. It's like towards the back. It's like after, um, right after like Philemon, which is teeny tiny, after the Timothys, after the Colossians and the Ephesians, like you're going to pass all that. And the Philippians, we're going to pass all that. We're going to just cruise. We're going to cruise. Pat, yeah, all those, those, those shuns, Corinthians. That wasn't a shun. That was an ands. Um, you're going to go, you know, obviously past Matthew, Mark, Luke. You're going to keep cruising. If you hit James, you've gone too far. If you hit James, it ah, breaks. You've gone too far. Bring it back. Bring it back now. Bring it back. Bring it back. Okay. So, did anybody find Hebrews yet? You in Hebrews? Hebrews 11. Now, this is actually our memory verse for this month. Woo! We'll probably think of something else ridiculous that we're going to do for this month if you guys learn this memory verse. So, start practicing now. And this first part is what we're going to be um, learning about. And this is what we're going to be memorizing this month. Hebrews 11, 1. And it says this. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see, cannot see. Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> I apologize. If I don't let it out, then I'm just going to keep sneezing. These allergies, anybody else, they're very tiny. I don't know what exactly they are, but they're floating up my nose and making me sneeze a lot. I don't know. It says, I have faith that there are, there's pollen out there because I've been sneezing like a crazy person. All right, so faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So that's where we're going to be kicking off today in our Hebrews. Thank you, Palmers, for blessing me and Snyders. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love to be blessed. Hashtag, hashtag blessed, right? So Hebrews 11.1, 1, that is our memory verse Okay, so um, it, it says here, we're going to kind of take a, a look back. And this is the whole point of this is uh, you look back at what you do know to then be able to trust what you don't know. That's faith. That's how it comes together. So we're going to look back into what we uh, do know in the Bible. And so uh, Hebrews, we call it the Hall of Faith. It talks a lot about the history and what came before and then ties it together with what happened with Jesus. And that is this cool little book called Hebrews. It's like, it's a good book. If you guys haven't read Hebrews yet, you should just take a meander into it because it's good stuff in there. So we're going to start out with, um, we can start with Adam and Eve because we know the story of how God created everything. He created the heavens and the earth. He created man and he created woman. And they, you know, they, they made a mistake and they decided to not listen to God and what his plan was. And so, things did a switch up. 
And then we now live in the world that we live in, this fallen world where bad things happen and, and confusing things happen and, and sad things happen. And, and that's part of what happened because of Adam and Eve making some bad choices. Come on, guys, pull it together, right? Okay, but then we're gonna fast forward a little bit. We're gonna go to a guy named Abraham. We call him Father Abraham, had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm. Remember Father Abraham? If we were together, I would make you sing it with me, but we're not, so you can just sing it in your living rooms. Um, father Abraham, he became the father of nations. Now he was an older man, um, his wife was an older woman, and God made this promise and said, Abraham, I am gonna give you a crazy large family. What? He's like, yeah, good story, God. You missed a few decades, because that would have been happening a long time ago. But God is faithful, and they had a son, and through that son, a nation was born. We had Isaac, and we had Jacob, and we have all of these people, and you go bah, 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 down the line to a really awesome guy that we learned about called David, who slew Goliath. I almost said a dragon. <laughs> no, slew Goliath. Oop, that's the dogs running. Took him out, became this like amazing character that we talk about even still, right? Thousands of years later, we're still talking about that little boy David who beat this giant, chopped off his head. Come on, that's why we talk about it. It's cool, right? We got the lineage of that. And we have these prophets that came. And we have all of this amazing stuff that happened in the Old Testament that leads up to the amazing story of Jesus being born, of Jesus healing people, walking around, doing incredible things, right? That leads us to us having this opportunity to have a relationship with him, to make that choice to say, Jesus, I am going to follow you no matter what. It all comes through the story of what we do know. Now, all year long, we learn stories from our Bible. We, we always go to God's word because when we go to God's word, we know that we have a foundation that can't be shaken. When I'm just telling you a story about me as a kid, when I'm just telling you a story about, you know, some funny thing, you know, that's great, that's good, whatever, it's fine. But when I go into my Bible, when I tell you a story from here, it is a foundation that cannot be shaken. There's nothing, you can't refute it. It's not like, well, that maybe, no, it happened. It's the truth, Ruth. You know it, right? And so that is where you build your faith. So when the hard things come, when the stuff that doesn't make sense comes, when the sadness comes, when the disappointments come, you can say, hold on, rewind. You guys don't understand the power of a rewind button because you have everything digital. But when Miss Val was a kid and maybe some of your parents were kids, we had these things called cassette tapes, right? And when you wanted to re-listen to something, you had to hold down a button and went, and it rewound to what you wanted it to do. So I'm gonna rewind. You're gonna, when you come to those hard things, you're gonna rewind and go, whatever noise you wanna make. It just it made, made really weird noises. Occasionally it ate your tape, but then it made a really bad sound. You're like, not listen to that song again. It's lost forever. See, I have to wait, catch it on the radio again. Uh, you just know that when those hard things come and you stop, you focus on what you do know. And you say, wait a second. I remember a story we heard in the Bible about a guy named Moses. Yeah, Moses as a baby, he, he, was, he was supposed to be killed, but his mom didn't want him to die. And so she put him in a basket. She sent him down a river. The Pharaoh's daughter adopts him. He becomes part of the stinking royal family. This kid who was supposed to be dead, right? He then defends some, he kind of defends his own people. He kills someone. Not a great moment in Moses' story. Um, he runs away, but God calls him back to then save his people. That was some hard stuff. Moses had a hard little row uh, to, to, to plant. I mean, that was a tough, he had a lot of rocks in his, and you know, when you plant fields, there's like stones. It gets, that, was a dumb, that was a dumb analogy. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Who, uh, Harrison Ware is the only one who understood that one. Because he's a farmer. He's a farmer boy. He knows. But uh, the rest of us, you know, when you're going through those hard things, right, 
that was Moses. He had a really, he had a really uphill, uphill climb. That was a tough one, right? We come across people in our Bible like Job. I mean, Job, he went through some things. There was some tough stuff. I mean, he lost everything. And when I say everything, I mean his, his family, his wife, his money, his health, uh, everything that you could have gone. But he kept the faith. He said, you know what? I trust that God is with me, that he loves me. I know the promises that I've read in, in my Bible over and over and over again about how God is faithful and I'm not going to give up no matter what. And that's what we're learning about all month, guys. And this is the thing that I want you to remember. You can know Jesus even though you've never seen him. You can know him because you know his story. You can know him because you know his word. You can know him because you know what he's done in your life. And you can see the goodness and say, oh my gosh, that's Jesus. And you can hold on to that even when things don't make sense. You can hold on and focus on that even when you can't see it, you can't touch it, you can't, you can't give it a high five. I occasionally give Jesus high fives. It's in my head mostly. I'm like, yeah, Jesus, that was a good one. Boom. You can hit it up. It's fine. It's a relationship and you know it's there because you know what he's done for you already. And so we're going to be talking about it really the next two months. It's, it's our summer focus. Focus. Um, that will definitely not be sticking up for two months. I'm going to have to come up with a plan for that. Because uh, Post-it notes just not that sticky. I mean, they're like fine on a piece of paper, but on my wall, I can't believe none have fallen down. It's kind of like Jesus is with us because they have been falling off for like the last hour. Like just ping, 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 pop it off. And I've been having to put them back up. But it's sticking. So I have faith. I have faith that I'm going to need to use some tape, but that we're going to be able to keep our focus and uh and see so yeah um just just a reminder of our memory verse because we did already say it but this is what we're going to be learning about this month hey parents if you want maybe right now you can take a screenshot i'm gonna bring it close i'm gonna bring it closer and this is ooh, bring it over miss val there we go faith is being sure of what we hope for it is being sure of what we do not see and that is hebrews 11 1 in the nerve that's right, kids. We're in the book of nerve. I know that's your favorite. That's your favorite version is when we nerve it up. So that is what you got coming for you. Um, I want to pray with you guys today. I'm going to pray. Take a minute. We're going we're gonna to just send up some prayers. Um, I also, ooh, where's that? I brought my offering container today. Um, I drew an eyeball on the bottom. Um, yeah, I don't really have an explanation. I just felt it looked like a telescope maybe and that you could see like my eye. And I thought it looked cool. So there it is. But I have the, our uh, our uh, offering. So if you guys have your offering, make sure today at some point you put it in your offering container. Uh, and so that way you're, you're saving it up. Saving it up. Uh, there are some dollars in here still. I don't know if you can see that. I think probably not because it's dark in there. But there's still some dollars. I got some dollars in here. Can't hear it because it's paper money. Um, ooh, there it is. You hear it? Uh, some dollars in there. Make sure that you're putting back your offering because when we get back together, we're going to be giving a big offering and I'm excited. It's going to be a good one. Woo! So we're going to pray over our offering. We're going to pray over our friends down in Honduras and that it may continue to bless them. And I'm going to pray for you guys. So you guys ready to assume the position? Are you ready? On the count of three, here we go. A one, a two, a three. Father, we thank you for these amazing students, these amazing kids and their heart for you. God, we pray that as they continue to give their offering through this time, Father, that um, it is not unnoticed by you, God, that you see it and that you are blessing them even now. Um, Father, we thank you for our friends down in Honduras. We thank you for Matt and Marianne and the amazing work that they are doing down there. And we pray that this money will continue to just bless their ministry, bless what they're doing. And that, Father, that you would just have a hedge of protection around them, keeping them safe always, always, always. We thank you for them and for their hearts for uh, your kids, and we just thank you for that. And right now, Father, I wanna pray for all of these kids that are tuned in today, every kid who's gonna watch this, and I just pray, God, that they would know that they can trust you. They can trust you because they've seen what you have done in the past. They can see these amazing stories that live in their Bible, and God, that we pray that they would continue to um, 
Fill their hearts with faith that it would make them strong as they believe in you. And uh, God, that there is nothing that they can't do when you are on their side. So we pray that you would just help them rely on that to frog it up, fully rely on God that's right. And uh, we just are going to uh, keep diving in and focusing on you to learn more about you this month. We thank you. And in Jesus' amazing and precious name, we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Well, this week, um, we are going to be doing some I Spy. Get ready for a video that will be coming out later. Later, alligator. Make sure to take pictures. I meant to bring my little people over. I have them, but I didn't bring them over to my table. That was dumb. Um, make sure that you are taking your, your kids' leaders on adventures. It's going to be super, super funny. Let's go. Uh, and get ready for one o'clock. Come back to Facebook. Come back. You don't want to miss it. I mean, you can catch it on the replay, but is it as much fun on the replay? I don't know that it is. So if you want to see Miss Val getting slimed, Miss Gabby getting slimed, I'm just believing in faith that Miss Gina is going to show up, even though we didn't quite hit 30, that she's going to show up and she'll be like, you know what? I'm so impressed with all our kids. I want to get slimed too. And I want to just be there with them and just... I'm believing in faith that she's going to show up and she's going to get slimed with us. I'm believing in faith. Who's going to believe with me? Believe with me. Have a great week, guys. We love you. Make sure you're checking out the page. Lots of good things happening this week. Have a good one. Praying for y'all. Be blessed. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy this beautiful day. And peace out. See you later.